yeah. So I'm 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 David Doing, uh, CEO here at Fingal, and we are in the business of better understanding um, who an account holder is, what's happening in their life, what they need next, based on how they spend their money and make their money. Because you know we vote with our wallets. Who we do business with says a lot about us. Who does business with us says a lot about us. And so we analyze that transaction data um, to build basically a marketing profile. Uh, and that can be used to create a call sheet for a banker to pick up the phone and figure out like, hey, why are you using so-and-so for merchant services? Like, we're right here, guys. Stop paying square for that. To automated marketing campaigns that could be uh, powered by, you know, really sophisticated systems or something like MailChimp, right? Um, yeah, I mean, so that's like the elevator pitch of what we're working on. But uh, yeah, I, I'd love to talk if it's cool with you guys about like why we do this. Like, why do we give it? Why do we give a shit here? I I feel like I'm a broken record here, but I also can't say it enough times that community banks matter, right? The competition is not the credit union. The competition is not the other community bank, and it's not Chime. The competition is got a stagecoach out in front and is red and yellow. Okay, I'm not going to say their names so that the bots don't come and cease and desist me, but. We've all driven through towns that have a community bank and we've driven through towns that don't have a community bank anymore. And it is night and day, right? I, I live in a small town. I live in an old mining community here in Colorado, uh, Lafayette, Colorado. And we have a vibrant main street. And I love that we have local institutions that are investing back into our community. I love that as a business owner, we, I can pick up the phone and call the CEO of the couple of banks that we work with, right? And, you know, community institutions matter. And I can't, you know, single-handedly solve that. You guys can't solve that. No bank can solve it, right? It's by working together and doing our parts and collaborating that we can beat that red and yellow orange thing that doesn't know what the hell they're doing and is destroying small communities all around this country. I love it, man. And I do too. I'm yes. with you a thousand percent. And mm -hmm. you know, the idea that you know somehow people in the communities are going to wake up one day and go, "Man, I should kind of like shop local and go to a bank." And it's like, I wish it was that easy. Really, what we got to do is compete at a higher level. And I don't think any community banker shies away from competition, right? You know, I yeah. mean, what they. I tell people all the time, I could run a mega bank standing on my head. It's not that tough, but run a community bank and you got to be an expert. Yeah. It really does. Uh, and competing is what they do best. And really, this is why I love what you do. You're taking things that would never be available. And everybody talks about it. Hey, you should do the data. Look at the analyzer. It's basically. the most talked about it. topic. And right? then, then the next yeah. question, how do I do that? Yeah, nobody has an answer. Everybody to can tell you what you ought to do, but nobody can tell you how to yeah. do it. And here's the guy that can tell you how to do it. That's right. Yeah. I think that's huge, man. I mean, look, we also hear, you know, again, I won't name names, but I mean, I hear from a lot of the big companies that are super focused on you guys and what you're doing and doing differently, which is cool, right? Uh, and I yeah. think it should be the same thing for the, the community banks, right? Especially given, I mean, look, we work a ton together on all kinds of things from bankers helping bankers and other things. And, uh, you guys are super, super good people and all about community banks. But I think what you're doing is to the point, it's to the topic that everybody's talking about, but how do you do it? You want to break that down a little bit further? So, I mean, I mean, look, we all get, I actually, I thought your, uh, your square and merchant services example was a damn good one. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we can call it data enrichment. We can look at it as targeting data and customers. There's a lot of inflows and outflows stuff that comes into that, right? And it's sort of the... It's been this like topic for years and years, probably for longer for you, right? But it's the institution wants to own the customer sort of cradle the grave. And it's the yeah. most difficult thing to really get to. And you're kind of taking the data-driven approach at let's first understand it and then we can part that out. Is that fair? I'm gonna dig into that. A yeah, bit. absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, folks ask us like, hey, so you just like transaction cleansing, like a couple of other big companies that are out there that do that. And it's like, yeah, we can clean up transactions. We can put logos and categories and phone numbers to call up that merchant if it was a bad, you know, if you're confused or something, great. A lot of people can do that. It's becoming a commodity service, right? There's not a lot of money in it. But the reason that we do it, the reason that we happen to be better at it than anybody on the planet, um, and I'll talk about how we're better in a minute, but the reason we do it is that 
our secret sauce that is not so secret because it's really hard to replicate is if we can figure out who is the counterparty to every one of your transactions, who's paying you or, and who you're paying, right? I don't care if it's merchants. I don't care if it's service. I don't care if it's 1099s or payment services, whatever, loans, don't care. But if we figure out who the counterparty is, then what we do, our secret sauce is we then scrape all the public information we possibly can from the web and other public sources about the other party. We turn that into structured data, I'm not trying to get super technical here. And like colloquially, it's figuring out who are you doing business with that makes you different than the business next door or your next door neighbor. So being able to clean up a target transaction and put a, you know, a red circle logo in there to say like, oh, hey, I know that was Target. Big deal, right? Everybody goes to Target if they're in town. Everybody shops through Amazon, whatever. It's the little folks, the small local merchants, service providers, payers, et cetera, that are inside of your transaction feed that says like who you are as an individual, the nuanced stuff that makes you you, that makes you different than the guy next door, right? And so that, that's been our thesis for the four plus years that we've been working on this. And so we realized in the very beginning, we had to get really good with those small merchants, which is what everybody else in the game forgets and, and just says it's not worth it because it's, it's too expensive for them to worry about long tail merchants. They're like, oh, if I get all the big guys, if I get the thousand largest merchants in the country, that will make everything else look good. And then let's just make them not be capital letters and do whatever, right? Um, and that'll make the trans, the, like your feed or your statement look clean. Cool. Like, like BFD, right? What the magic comes from understanding who that small merchant is and building that marketing profile of like, okay, what's the nuance about you? But here's the really freaking cool side effect that we didn't expect. Like I'm not smart enough to have like predicted this. Who cares more about the small businesses in their community than anybody else? The community bankers, right? And so when you can have the local merchants showing up on statements and in the digital banking experience as first-class citizens, the local hardware store looks just as good as Home Depot. That says something to every one of your customers, personal and business, about how you as a bank think about the small folks that are around you, right? When you transfer to another community institution and that transfer looks like garbage, but if you transfer to Chase, you can see it and it looks good. And Chase has a logo, even though the other community bank, even though your own community bank transfer like an A to A transfer within two accounts, doesn't have your logo and it's a messy looking transaction, which happens every day with the other guys. Like, what is that communicating, right? Now, no one's gonna pay extra for that. I can't charge like 50% more because I can make small merchants look good. I wish I could, I can't. But like, that's just a happy side effect that communicates the right thing. And the real money is then, hey, we know who that local hardware store is. We know what they're doing. And the bank wants to run a promotion with that local hardware store so that their card holders in that community get 5% cash back when they go with their local bank card and they go to that local hardware store. Well, now that's really freaking cool, right? Anyway, sorry, I know I'm going on for forever. I, I love it. No, it's like, look, it's, I mean, all of us sitting here, whether it's banks watching or vendors or whoever, we all think the same way about how do I take better care of my customers, right? Or we should be thinking that. And to your point, you got to love a community bank and a community because your customers, be they the, ret the retail side, or maybe it's even the wealth or the business, yeah. right? It all plays together and you're trying to create a kind of a local market, right? Yeah. And you're the market maker. You can put everybody together and play in a local network, right? And that's something that I think community banks probably do really well as sort of the boots on the ground. Right, whether it's the, oh, yeah. supporting the local 4-H or in the parade, right? We bring all the people together, but in the technology, we've never really gotten there. And I think you brought up a huge point. It's because most of the technology providers don't think about that local level when it's probably what should be most important to the community bank, right? It's under provided, yeah. under served. You won't believe this, but <clears throat> most of the big guys don't build their products for community banks. <laughs> Pulling that out there. Hey, easy now. Yeah, you bet. You bet. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So that was a really good dive into kind of understanding everything that you guys do. And I mean, thinking about watching back years and years into, you know, some of the, the names we won't name, that has been an interesting market to watch evolve, right? And I think you kind of struck on the key part of they all get to 90% of the way there really quickly that way. Mm -hmm. 
but they sort of strike out on the last 10 and it's kind of the, you know, it's the, it's the thorn in the side of those businesses that they never really get all the way there as they should. And I think you're taking a different approach that's positive. Really good. Yeah. And I, I can't blame them for it because there wasn't enough money in it that way. Right. And it's really hard to do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those merchants 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when those companies were started were cash only. Yeah. Right. So you didn't see those transactions. So like, I don't begrudge it to them. And we only got good at it because we needed that level of fidelity at, at the local, at the long tail merchant, the mom and pop level to do the other stuff, right? To, to do the other real magic that we do. And don't get me wrong. It's hard. We've spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of people to get that done. And now it works beautifully and we can go head to head and beat anybody out there um, in this market and in a couple other countries, which is pretty cool. This is really cool. So at a super high level. If a banker had ever heard of any of what the hell we're talking about here, how would you say what we're talking about is? It's, is it analyzing the spend of the people that use your actual card or, or what you're trying to evoke a behavior change in the consumer? I mean, tell, explain to them a little bit. About yeah, it. absolutely. So the data that you need to have, and every bank has this, you need, uh, we analyze ACH traffic, we analyze wire traffic and card behavior on debit card and credit cards. Um, and bankers have that. Banks know that they have really valuable data. You hear this all the time. Everybody's talking about it over cocktails at every conference, right? Um, And we're taking that to basically turn into call sheets, reports, and personalized like marketing segments to send out automated messaging to your customers based on what they need next. Instead of what, candidly, a lot of banks do today on the digital side, which is like the offer of the month. Okay, we're going to send an offer about like this one product to every customer that doesn't have that product. And that's the sophisticated version versus we're going to send an offer about this product to everybody, you know, and we're like, you know, slow down, slow down. Do they need this product? Do they want this product? Why? And this is our magic. Why do they want this product? So that now the marketing you put in front of them. So I, it's um, two, two things that we do really cool is identify the, what, like the types of businesses and the types of thing, life events that are happening for personal account holders. So that let's just say it's a personal loan. Um, instead of just saying, hey, we've got the best rates in town and you're pre-qualified, the marketing should put in front of them, if you can know it, why they want that personal loan. Right? A customer isn't doesn't wake up one morning and say, I want unsecured debt. No, they're like, hey, I want to help my kid pay for their wedding, or I want to take my wife on that Mediterranean cruise she's been asking about forever, right? Now, I'm not saying that you should take unsecured debt to pay for vacation, right? That's a, sec- that's a different conversation. But we can predict that based on what we see in their spend so that now the aspirational ad that you get, send them, they see themselves in it. Personal. Right? Yes. Personal. Is out there. This yes. sounds like magic. It's it and really what it is 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 uh it's the same stuff everybody else is hitting you with. We yeah. see it all over the place, right? Yeah. But, and in community banking, especially, we've not been good at personalizing. Look, this is a key part. We mess this wording up and talk about it like it's marketing. And I think yeah. there's been a very subtle shift in the last five years or so where it doesn't feel like salesy and marketing to your customer base. It feels like you don't know them if right. you're not doing it. Bingo. That's something Bingo. that I've been talking to bankers a lot in the last year or so that you look at this as a, uh, a personalized targeted marketing and it's uh, it goes under the umbrella of selling stuff to your customers and you don't want to be too pushy when actually not bringing them personalized offers. It makes them feel like yeah. the, the place with the horse and buggy knows them better than you do because they're doing it. Ugh. Yeah. Right. It's important. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's That's, that's exactly right. But I do want to, I want to, I want to call something out. All of that sounds really complicated and sophisticated and really hard to implement, mm-hmm. right? And I was just—I was talking to the CEO of a seven hundred fifty million dollar institution this morning, and we were talking about like our crawl, walk, run process. He asked me, like, we give, like, we talk about what we do and everything we just said. It's like that sounds like a lot. I'm not ready for that yet, right? And he lays out where they are current state, and I'm like, that's cool. Here's how. Here's like, here's the crawl, walk, run. We get a one-time transaction feed. You probably have it in an audit report today, right? Send it to us. I don't need any PII. And we take the offers, the product pages that you already have on your website. You have to build anything new. And we're just going to match it. 
So that now instead of just sending the offer of the month, you're sending maybe 12 different offers to 12 different groups of people. We're not customizing anything else yet, right? And I will show you returns on that immediately. And you know what? We could, uh, we could do that and prove that for you. It does not cost an insane amount of money and it costs no time from them. Right. Right. Like literally, no, you don't need a marketing team. You don't need, yeah, you don't need, you don't need to hire an agency in town. Let's just start with what you've got and just send it to the right people. And then you see those results and then you ask yourself, well, how good do I want it? And then we can talk about the next level and the next level and the next level. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Man, this, this is so cool. I get to do this for a living yeah. and uh, talk to companies and, and find these neat things that are happening. And, Man, everything we're talking about, I, I, it's like another level of, I wish I were as old as I am. And then you'd look at this and go, what? Okay. And I know there's a lot of guys out there in the decision level chair that's probably looking at this going, now, oh, wait a minute. How the hell can they do it? And if that's so easy, how come somebody else hasn't done it yet? And again, we kind of outlined that early on. What everybody wants to do is go get the biggest accounts, the biggest banks, the biggest vendors, biggest everything, and make the most of money money at the least amount of work that they can do. And then they begin to start variating from there. They don't think this thing from the ground up. And part of this is technology. Part of this is innovation, innovation from people like you and understanding the marketplace oh, yeah. by working with people. I don't want to say like us, but others, you know, that, that can help connect the dots of what the needs really are. And then all of a sudden you've opened up a world for a banker that, well, how much does that cost? How much does that take? It ain't that bad. We figured that out too. Yeah. There is no, yeah. I've got to put you in a headlock and drag you for a half a damn mile to get right. you there. Right. But if it's easy for you and it makes you money, this has been my fundamental thing about what we do here and why bankers helping bankers, why fed fizz, why data, why do you do, why do you even keep working? Because we're at a moment in time right now that we can do things you wouldn't have dreamed of a few years back. It's not impossible. We're there now. All you have to do is have the courage to get off your ass, pick up the phone and go show me. And how much does it cost? That's right. Maybe it'll pick up the phone, call you back and take care of that. These things are the difference that community banks, you and I have had this conversation about community bank can innovate at speed where the bigger institutions throw money at it. How do I compete with Jamie Dimon putting $8 billion into FinTech? More efficiently. More efficiently. There you go. Yeah. That's it. I and it. finally, people like you have seen the value of the economic supply side of community banking. We don't want to blow this one, y'all. And well, we're let doing me the best we that. can to put these things out there. Something important to me in that topic is think about the time that somebody like David has taken, invested into learning and understanding community banking, our markets, right? Working and living and all this for years and years. Isn't it incumbent upon the community banks to show them a little bit of the same respect? That's how we feel with the Bankers Helping Bankers Fund, right? Finding mm -hmm. and people who are the rock stars innovating. Yeah. You could have been working in crypto, man. It's not like you That's don't right. have the mind for it, right? You mm -hmm. could have been doing a lot of could things that are probably <laughs> financially better for you, right? Uh, so, I mean, there's a there's a certain level of appreciation of finding the good yeah. people and the good innovators and bringing them in. And I think what you just said, man, I really appreciate that people like you go the extra mile to create the level that it takes for a community banker right. to be able to win. OK, that was missing. And now people like you are going, hey, man, maybe he drank our Kool-Aid going, hey, the community bankers where the money's at. Sorry about that. But the community bankers, like you said, pick up the phone. You bet. It's not that hard, y'all. The community bank needs to realize that you got taken for a ride by a whole lot of people for a long, long time. Yep. Selling you on this technology is a must-have, and it's actually a cost that doesn't really return anything for you. What we're all trying to do here is bring these products to you that actually make you money instead of just... Bingo. 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 We drive, we drive a single targeted campaign. You get one new merchant account from it. You get one new commercial loan from it. You get one debt consolidation loan from it, if that's your game. And everything paid for itself, right? Like this is not excessively expensive. Some years ago, it might have been, right? The technology has made things cheaper at without massive amounts of scale so that we can afford to do this. Like that's why this wasn't possible 10 or 15 years ago. Right. When you're delivering that same thing a click further down, 
right? What we just talked about at the community bank level is actually the value prop that you're helping them deliver to their customers too. Boom. This exact yeah. same story holds true. I love it. Love it. Absolutely. Man, I, I just want to say thank you for what you guys do for community banking. I know you hear it all the time and you probably get, get tired of hearing it, but you know, your, 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 your approach, we take the same one, right? Like we're only on this planet for a short time. Choose who you, who you work with carefully, right? Because it matters and working with people that are fun to work with that are high integrity and that give a shit about the right things matters, right? That's why community institutions and the small businesses they serve is so fun, right? Like that is so much fun, um, you know, and serving the big guys just isn't. They're going to take you for a ride. They're going to, they're going to, they have the most money to pay and they're going to squeeze you the most, yeah, right? A- In place. And then, and then still call you in the middle of the night and say, I want more, right? Yeah. And it's, it it's a, it's a death march, right? And we can all do better. Our customers deserve better. Our communities deserve better. So anyway, so thank you. I don't mean to wax poetic, but the fact that you get it makes me feel good. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, we got the luckiest position of all to be able to deliver cool products like yours to the bankers and go, "Hey, look, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's a neat thing you can do." It's here. the best time ever to be a community it banker. Really right? is totally, totally. Yeah, like th- like stuff like this, and there's a million other like ev- anything, any single part of your your bank that you think about. I want to grow this. I want to improve this. I want to be more efficient. Whatever, right? I want to, I think if I do this, I can do more for my community, right? And whatever this is, they're like our kind of vintage of organizations, right? Have figured out how to do that in a way that is affordable, in a way that more important than the cost, because the value is insane, right? Like you're going to make plenty of money. I can charge five times what we charge, but it's easy to get started with, right? Because there, nobody has extra people. Nobody has time for additional priorities, right? Like it just needs to get done for me. So I can see the results and go back to serving the community and figuring out how I want to compete on that next big commercial loan, you know, that's, that's, that's coming up. Right. And you know, that's the exciting stuff. Um, I don't think any anyway. banker is going to be offended if you told them they're not very good at marketing. Right. I mean, <laughs> most, none of us here are right. Yeah. And it, it's kind of cool because I, I really like, there's something emotional in what you guys do. It's, it's putting something moral back into the marketing to be frank, right? Sure. You're actually bringing a, uh, a compass to the marketing, making it such that in theory, the the customers of the bank should want to receive that message. That's exactly it. Not the shotgun approach. That's a bit Bingo. of a control marketing. Do you remember right? the guy that told us that time? He said, when I'm in the middle of opening an account, I don't want a loan. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like getting the marketing pow at the wrong moment, yeah. right? Wrong message. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the coolest thing that I see happen a lot, and this happens a ton at, at, at community banks, is that if, if you've got a decent consumer, like personal um, card business, debit or credit, we see like high single digits of consumer accounts have meaningful small business activity hiding in plain sight inside of their consumer accounts. And the only business services that they're getting are coming from the Etsy's and Shopify's and Squares of the world that are slowly grabbing all of their fin- and taking care of all their financial needs, at really high costs to the customer, right? Like, let's not forget that. Um, don't get me wrong; they're opening up markets and doing cool stuff. Great, all of that's fine. I'm not begrudging, you know, Etsy or Shopify for that. But you know, suggesting that they're going to be better at merchant services, especially in-person live merchant services, than your local bank's going to be is ridiculous. And running campaigns and getting more of the community supporting you in that community, connecting you with other folks in that community that are going to help you expand, right? Let's not forget that massive part of community banking. Nobody talks about that, but the connections that they make between entrepreneurs in the community and folks that want to back entrepreneurs in that community. And I don't mean some software startup. I mean, somebody that just wants to open a second location, right? Um, And anyway, so we're seeing tons of that traffic inside of personal accounts, flagging it, identifying, okay, money in, money out, that's business focused, separating it from the personal, even though it's all commingled in the same account. And also identifying what other vendors they have, say like Square, et cetera. And because we have visibility into who their suppliers are, like who, who else they're doing business with, we can figure out what type of business that they are long before they ever open a business account and give you some code from you know SBA of what type of business they're in, right? And again, 
sending them that targeted email that just says, hey, business growing, we know small business. And the creative might even show somebody with that type of business that opened a food truck or has a yoga studio or whatever it is, right? Um, I can't tell you how many people are making a living on OnlyFans, but that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> that's a whole different kind of market. They need business services too, guys. <laughs> um, that's its own thing. But um, yeah, but the point is like, there's a lot of that activity, right? And if you can identify it, you can know them just like you would if they had time to come into your branch like they used to and talk to you. And a human looked at their looked at their account and said, hey, this is going on. Like, what are you guys working on? How's business, right? And that, that used to be how you'd convert them, right? That doesn't exist anymore because they're not coming in. And so if you want to still have that personal touch, you've got you to come to folks like us. So we're not like there's other people that do other cool things. Don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, I think like, that's the one that gets me the most excited because that's like, there's so much growth opportunity with the next generation of entrepreneurs that can be um, supported by their local banks and help those banks grow with them. Like, that's really cool stuff. It, it, it mirrors us and what we believe in our business and data so strongly because, look, nobody would look at us and say that we don't value relationships, right? I mean, come on. Right. But we use data. At, I mean, data-driven everything that we do to really understand relationships, topics, et cetera, right? So that we can bring it to the forefront. And I mean, ultimately, you're trying to use data and technology to make the people go further, yeah. right? Yeah. To your point, these days, they're much less likely to be walking into the branch and asking questions. And even worse so, those other things and other services and providers are reaching out to them with those targeted relationship driven messages that we all need to be doing. Well, so and likewise, I, I mean, using data, you're talking about doing investing in people like David's company, right? right? You I mean, bet. Bingo. Good call. So there, there's all aspect. Hey, everybody all the time, you know, Hey, you're a data guy. What do you do with a data company? It's like, you wouldn't believe what I've done with a data company. It informs. It, it just makes it's like playing a game against somebody that has no information and you hold all of the information. It's like, I'll whip your ass every time, yeah. every yeah. time. But and what you're doing is the same thing for the banker, for but, the community banker. But it's important to note, and I think David hit this throughout everything he said has been important, but it, the idea, especially if you just read your most popular LinkedIn article of the day, the idea that the bank is going to spin up some special team. I mean, who's got a dozen extra right. data analysts, brilliant, very expensive people to spin up tomorrow. That's not going to happen. Right. And so right. I think it, it's been this foregone conclusion that we can bring in partners to help us work in these problems. Right. And that's exactly what you guys do. And you've essentially built you know, that crawl, walk, run, or a framework of services, right? Kind of like reports driven, but you've got a framework of little parts and pieces to kind of help people step through. That's huge. I mean, you got to get to the ROI, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. All right, man, here's the big question. Are you ready? Final thoughts. It could be anything you want. And I know you like, you donated a kidney to like your kid's teacher. So, I mean, Look, any anything you want, but final thoughts, the world, you know any, anything me? you want. He told me, he said, if I don't know that I've gotten this much publicity over giving a kidney, I'd have done it a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It's, it's, it's true. Yeah, uh, you, want. you know what? Like, I, I've, I've, I've given plenty of a, a spiel about here. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll give two final thoughts. One is for for bankers that are, are watching – and I know there's uncertain times, different banks are in different, you know, situations deposit wise. Everybody's worried about retention and customers that are kind of like quiet quitting them, things like that. Have faith, have courage, stick around and, and work with your team, bring in some new team if you need to, but have courage to continue serving your community. I think that's a really, really big deal. I might be able to help you with what we do. I might have nothing to do with helping you do more ag loans. Go to town. That's great. Like, I love that, right? Farmers need that. Um, but have courage to stick around. I think that that's what we need more than anything else. Um, I'll stick with the, cur with the courage theme. Um, you, brought, you, brought, you brought up the kidney thing. Um, so I donated a kidney about a year ago um, to, to my kid's uh, teacher. And people ask me all sorts of questions about it. 
And one, it wasn't nearly as difficult or painful or recovery wise. Like I was back in the office in like eight days. Um, it was 4th of July weekend. So it was an extended weekend anyway. Um, but the big thing is if you like, that might not be right for most people. That's totally cool. Give blood. You save lives when you give blood. So if, if going and being an, an organ, a living organ donor is not for you, that's cool. Um, if it's cool with your faith, being an organ donor, you know, at death, you know, sign up with the, with the DMV or MVA or whatever to get that done. Um, but give blood, uh, my, uh, um, uh, headmaster in high school, but he would always be on the announcement when we would do our blood drive. And he would say the most pristic action that you can take is to give blood. Right. Which is always like stuck with me. Um, and anyway, so if nothing else, think about that. If it's been a little while, um, you know, go get a needle stuck in you. They give you free cookies. I love it, man. Be All thoughtful. Right. One thing I can, if I can leave a parting thought today, if, if people like this believe in community banking, and like you said, this is a damn great opportunity, great time right now. Bankers, believe in yourselves again as much as we all believe in you. I agree. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for riding with the Cowboys, man. We'll see you next time, buddy. Absolutely. Great. Right.